Assalamu alaikum and yo, yo what's happening guys my name is Sif and welcome back to another video hope you guys are doing well today we're going to be talking about SPM chemistry so these are all the topics of SPM chemistry I'll look at these topics in three categories topics to pass or get credit topics to get a minus and to get a plus dalam category pass slash credit akan ada topik-topik yang paling senang dan tak perlu banyak masa untuk hafal bagi Asif ni adalah topik-topik chemistry yang paling senang dan kalau korang aim untuk pass or credit fokus betul-betul topik-topik yang ni je pasal topik yang lain just go through untuk A- belajar semua topik-topik yang senang tadi pasal tambah electrochemistry, salt, carbon compound dan redox hanya yang aim A+, saja perlu belajar tentang manufacture of chemicals dan chemicals for consumers bagi yang A- atau pass or credit tak belajar pun tak apa Okay, bagi Asif, chemistry is all about understanding and kalau korang tak faham satu konsep tu, terus semua soalan tak boleh jawab. So in this video, my plan is to go through beberapa topik yang korang mungkin struggle untuk faham dan bagi beberapa cara mudah untuk hafal. Okay, yang pertama dari topik 2, form 4, historical development of atomic structure. Soalan ni memang setiap tahun akan keluar dalam kertas satu. So memang bagus kalau ingat. Cara Asif ingat ni ialah Asif akan buat development of atom tu sendiri. First Asif akan tulis 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Lepas tu Asif tahu yang first first memang akan ada satu bulat je, nothing else. Lepas tu Asif tahu yang ada satu bulat tu jumpa charge dalam benda bulat ni iaitu elektron dan proton. Lepas tu tiba-tiba ada saintis cakap yang proton-proton semua ada kat tengah and dia jumpa nucleus. Lepas tu orang perasan pula yang elektron-elektron ni ada orbit dia sendiri. And then last kali ada saintis perasan yang dalam nucleus tu ada neutron. So urutan ni memang korang kena hafal dulu. And then ingat ayat, Dumbo tak ada red blood cell. Yes, gajah yang teringat besar dan mampus ni tak ada red blood cell. So sama macam hari tu, Asif akan ambil huruf pertama dari setiap perkataan dan ingat last name saintis tu. D for Dalton, T for Thomson, R for Rutherford, B for Bohr and C for Chadwick. Nama depan tu tak kisah sangat sebab dalam paper 1 memang dorang akan bagi nama penuh. And yeah, just like that korang dah boleh hafal ni. Next ialah isotopes. Another very famous question. Isotopes are atoms from the same element with the same proton number but different nuclear number. There are 6 different isotopes that you need to remember. Cobalt 60 is for cancer, carbon 14 is for age of archaeological artifacts, uranium 235 is for heat generated from nuclear reactions, sodium 24 is to find leakage in pipes, phosphorus 32 is used for agricultural purposes, and iodine 131 is used to treat goiter. So cara Asif ingat ni ialah cobalt starts from C and so does cancer. For carbon 14, I've heard of the term carbon aging. For uranium 235, we all know that uranium is a nuclear thing, so automatically we know it generates a lot of heat. Sodium 24, you know how salt is basically sodium chloride, and sometimes when we buy salt, the packages have a leak. There you go. Sodium 24 is used to detect leakages in pipes. Next, phosphorus 32. I don't know if it's just me, but phosphorus really sounds like something farmers will use. Get it? Phosphorus, farmers, hence agricultural purposes. And lastly, in bio, we learn that the cause of goiter is lack of iodine. So that helps us to remember the function of iodine 131. Make sure you remember these five isotopes by heart as they are very important. Now, Asif nak tunjuk ke korang contoh isotop iaitu carbon 12 dan carbon 14. As you can see, dua-dua ada proton number 6, number of electron pun 6, tetapi neutron dengan nuclear number tu lain. And because proton number dia sama, Chemically, they are the same. And neutron ni basically tambah berat je. So, because the number of neutron dua isotop ni berbeza, mass dia berbeza. Thus, isotopes are physically different but chemically similar. In chapter 3, chemical formula and equations, as the name, you need to remember a few equations which can be simplified into this diagram. If you're not good at this, at the start of the exam, scribble this on your paper because trust me, you'll use this diagram a lot. If you can't remember the diagram, try to memorize using the units. Conto, mole equals to mass over molar mass. Mass unit dia ialah G, dan molar mass unit dia ialah G mole negative 1. G tu kita boleh potong, dan mole negative 1 tu kita boleh bawa atas jadi mole. Next, mole kali RTP or STP, korang akan dapat volume. Unit untuk RTP dan STP ialah dm cube mole negative 1. 
So mall dengan mall negatif 1 tu kita boleh cancel dan tinggal cube je. Ketiga mall kali Avogadro constant and korang akan dapat number of particles. And then selepas ni Asif nak tambah lagi beberapa formula iaitu mole equals to mv over 1000, concentration equals to mass over volume dan last kali molarity. Soalan molarity ni jarang keluar but kalau keluar ramai student tak tahu macam mana nak buat. Molarity is basically concentration but unit dia mole per dm cube. Dan korang ada dua cara untuk calculate ni. Cara pertama just buat mole over volume and korang dah boleh dapat jawapan. And then cara kedua ni yang ramai student tak tahu. Korang kena buat concentration over molar mass. Unit concentration ialah G per dm cube and unit molar mass ialah G mole negative 1. So kita boleh cancel G tu dan bawa mole negative 1 ke atas dan dia akan jadi mole per dm cube iaitu molarity. Try untuk hafal semua formula dalam list ni sebab memang semua penting. Next, Asif nak quickly go through Avogadro constant. Firstly, ada 1 mole of carbon, 1 mole of sodium dan 1 mole of sulfur. Ketiga-tiga ni ada mass yang berbeza. Kalau soalan tanya what is the number of atom for each of this, apa jawapan korang? Jawapan dia adalah 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. Mass dia kita tak tengok pun. Kita hanya tengok the number of mole. Next, soalan bagi molecule. 1 mole of H2O, CO2 and C2H6. Soalan minta what is the number of molecules in each of the following? Apa jawapan korang? Jawapannya ialah 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules. Tadi kita jawab atom. Sekarang kita jawab molecules. Okay, let's see untuk soalan kedua ni. Soalan minta the number of atoms. Apa jawapan korang? Untuk 2A, disebabkan H2O ada 3 atom dalam satu molecule. Kita just kena buat 3 kali 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. Untuk CO2 pun sama juga sebab dalam satu molekul CO2 ada 3 atom. Dan dalam satu molekul C2H6 ada 8 atom. So jawapan dia 8 kali 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. Okay sekarang Asif nak korang jawab soalan ni. What is the number of atoms in 3 mole of chlorine gas? Pause video and cari jawapan. Untuk dapatkan jawapan untuk ni, kita first kena tulis mole dia iaitu 3 dan lepas tu kita kena check dalam satu molekul ada berapa atom. Untuk klorin iaitu Cl2 dalam satu molekul ada 2 atom. So jawapannya kita kali semua iaitu 3 kali 2 kali 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. So 3 kita ambil dari number of mole dan 2 kita ambil dari number of atom in one molecule. Okay let's say kita tukar soalan sikit. Kita tukar number of atom dengan number of molecules. Apa yang korang akan buat? Soalan ni lagi senang sebab kita just kena buat 3 kali 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules. Nampak tak benda ni senang je. Next kita lihat periodic table. Untuk periodic table ni memang bagus kalau korang boleh hafal the first 20 elements. Asif hafal guna lagu ni dari ASAP Science. There's hydrogen and helium, then lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon everywhere, nitrogen all through the air with oxygen so you can breathe in fluorine for your pretty teeth, neon to light up the sign, sodium for salty times, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, then sulfur, chlorine, then argon, potassium, and calcium so you'll grow strong. Jadi kalau korang dah hafal benda tu, nak isi periodic table ni akan jadi kacang. Benda penting yang Asif nak korang ingat ialah down the group atomic size increase and across the period atomic size decrease. Reason dia ialah down the group atomic size increase because number of shell increase and across the period atomic size decrease because the number of valence electron increase. Electrostatic force between nucleus and valence electron become stronger and valence electron are pulled closer to the nucleus. And selepas ingat semua ni, kalau boleh Asif nak korang tambah beberapa elemen dalam periodic table iaitu kat group 17 dan 18. Cara Asif ingat ialah untuk group 18, Asif akan ingat ayat Hafiz na X-ray and guna huruf-huruf dalam tu untuk ingat urutan elemen dalam group 18. Dan untuk group 17, sebab Asif ni peminat bola sikit, Asif akan guna ayat FC Barcelona India dan guna huruf-huruf ni Asif akan ingat fluorin, klorin, bromin dan iodin. Seterusnya kita lihat chemical bond. Chemical bond ada dua jenis iaitu ionic dan covalent bond. Benda paling asas yang korang kena tahu ialah ionic bond ni dari metal plus non-metal dan covalent bond ni dari non-metal plus non-metal. Ingat yang metal ni hanya dari group 1, 2 dan 13 iaitu valence electron 1, 2, 3. Manakala non-metal ialah group 14 hingga group 18 iaitu valence electron 4 hingga 8. Korang boleh refer dekat periodic table ni untuk mudah faham. Just ingat yang hydrogen bukan dalam group 1, dia just duduk atas group 1 saja. So kita buang hydrogen dan lithium sampai boron dan aluminium ialah metal dan carbon sampai group 18 semuanya kira sebagai non-metal. And now kita ada beberapa perbezaan untuk ingat antara dua bond ni. Yang pertama melting and boiling point untuk ionic high dan untuk covalent low. 
ionic compound ialah non volatile dan covalent compound ialah volatile kepada yang tak tahu volatile tu basically evaporate so non volatile means tak boleh evaporate dan volatile means easily evaporate next ionic compound only soluble in water dan covalent compound only soluble in organic solvent next ionic compound can conduct electricity in molten or aqueous state whereas covalent compound cannot conduct electricity in any state Ionic compound has strong electrostatic force whereas covalent compound has weak van der Waals force. Dan untuk diagram dia, basically ni cara lukis for both ionic dan covalent. Make sure korang ingat cara lukis diagram ni. And last but not least, ingat yang dalam ionic compound, electrons are transferred. Manakala in covalent compound, electrons are shared. Okay, electrochemistry. The first thing in electrochemistry that you should know is that the function of electrode is to complete the circuit without affecting the reaction. So the criteria are that it should be able to conduct electricity in solid state, it should be chemically inert or also known as unreactive. Examples are carbon, platinum and graphite. Usually people don't use platinum because it's expensive. Next is the electrolyte. Electrolytes should be able to conduct electricity in molten or aqueous state. Therefore, all electrolytes are ionic compounds. Examples are aqueous sodium chloride and molten copper to sulfate. Next, look at the battery. You need to know that the longer side is the positive terminal and the shorter side is the negative terminal. So now you need to know that the current moves from the positive to the negative terminal and electrons move from the negative to the positive terminal. Always, always, always label your diagram in the question. It'll 100% help you to answer. Now I need you to betul-betul tanam in your head the purpose of electrochemistry is to discharge. Not always, but most of the time. This rule doesn't apply when you use a metal electrode like copper or silver, but as long as the electrodes are carbon electrodes, ions will be discharged. For example, kat sini kita ada NaCl. Let's assume that it is molten NaCl, not aqueous. Kalau kita kena pecah NaCl ni jadi ion, dia hanya akan ada Na plus dan Cl minus. So macam mana kita nak buang charge positif dan negatif tu? Untuk Na plus kita kena tambah satu elektron dan untuk Cl minus kita kena buang satu elektron. Ingat yang klorin ialah dari grup 17 iaitu exist only as diatomic molecules. So kita kena tukar Cl jadi Cl2 dan balance equation balik. And just like that kita dah discharge Na plus to sodium atom and Cl minus to klorin molecule. And sekarang kita kena decide yang mana berlaku di positive terminal dan negative terminal. Untuk tu Asif ingat yang Asif punya target untuk chemistry ialah A plus. So the positive terminal will be the anode and automatically the negative terminal will be the cathode and sekarang Asif akan ingat yang anion goes to anode and cation goes to cathode in this half equation Cl minus is the anion and Na plus is the cation so using the above law I can straight away determine which reaction happens at which terminal all right the next thing you need to know is that there are three main factors affecting electrolysis number one being position of electrochemical series number two is the concentration of electrolytes and number three is the type of electrode take note that if the factor is concentration of electrode only anode and group 17 is affected and for the type of electrode only anode is affected so for all factors the cathode will always be the same by that i mean we only look at the position of the cation in the ecs i don't think i need to tell you this but you have to remember the ecs no matter what Cara Asif ingat ialah kalau nak cantik mesti ada zat besi sama panadol hingga cantik ayu dan untuk anion Asif guna free soccer no club but it's okay I may or may not have changed a little to keep the video PG but basically you can use whatever method you want as long as you can remember it. So the basic rule is that the ion which is lower in the ECS will be selectively discharged. Now with all that information I am gonna test you. This is an electrolytic cell with aqueous copper to chloride as its electrolyte and I'm gonna give you three scenarios. Firstly the electrolyte is 0.0001 mol dm cube and the electrode is carbon. Secondly electrolyte is 1 mol dm cube and electrode is carbon. Thirdly, electrolyte is again 0.0001 mol dm cube but the electrode is copper. You may have noticed basically these three scenarios are the three factors affecting electrolysis. So now I want you to write down all these half equations that occur in the anode and cathode of each of these. You can pause the video and try to do it now. I'll answer the questions in 3, 2, 1. Okay, first step is to find the positive and negative terminal. The long line is positive and the short line is negative. Next, our aim for chemistry is A+. So the positive terminal is the anode and the negative terminal is the cathode. Now we will write down anion goes to anode and cation goes to cathode. 
and now we will write down all the anions under the anode and all the cations under the cathode. So for the first scenario there is nothing special going on. So basically just use the ECS to choose the ion which is lower in the ECS. Hydroxide is under chlorine and Cu2 plus is under H plus. So we choose hydroxide and Cu2 plus to be selectively discharged. So at the anode the equation will be 4OH to 2H2O plus O2 plus 4E and at the cathode it will be Cu2 plus plus 2E to Cu. Try to memorize the equation for hydroxide because it will definitely be assessed in the exam. Next is 1 mole dm cube which is concentrated electrolyte. As stated just now, this only affects the anode and group 17. So add the cathode, same as just now, Cu2 plus plus 2E equals to Cu. And at the anode is where it changes. Instead of hydroxide, now chlorine is selectively discharged due to the high concentration. And the third factor where the electrode becomes copper, once again it only affects the anode. So at the cathode, same as just now, write Cu2 plus plus 2E equals to Cu and at the anode, things get a little interesting because instead of the anions, the copper electrode itself will take part in the reaction by ionizing itself. So you will be able to see the copper electrode become thinner because copper atom is becoming copper ion. So the half equation for this will be Cu to Cu2 plus plus 2E. And that's it. Hopefully by all these explanations, you will be able to understand more clearly the concept of electrolysis. If you don't understand the first time watching, try to rewind and watch it a few times. You really, really, really need to master this for chemistry. And the next part of electrochemistry is electrolysis in industries. I don't want to go through all of this because it's basically memorizing but I'll leave a link to download the file in the description as usual. But I just want to highlight a few important things which are bauxite is a mineral that consists of aluminum oxide and cryolite is used to lower the melting point of aluminum oxide. Try to remember these two things because high chance that these will be asked in paper 1 and the others you can pretty much go through yourself. They're really straightforward. Okay, next chapter is acid and base. This is quite an easy chapter, so I'll go through this very quickly. First, you need to know the definition of an acid and a base. Acid is a chemical compound that produces hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. And base is a chemical substance that can neutralize an acid to produce salt and water only. And alkali is a base that is soluble in water. Below this, I have given a few examples of acids and its uses. It's good if you can remember some of these because there is a chance that it will be asked. Next, there are five different reactions that could be asked in your exam. First is the acid plus base which will give you salt plus water. Next is the acid plus reactive metal which will give you salt plus hydrogen gas. And then acid plus metal carbonate will give you salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. And then alkali plus ammonium salt will give you ammonia plus water. And then alkali plus salt solution will give you metal hydroxide. And besides this, I have given a few explanations for neutralization. Go through this and also try to remember a few extra uses of acids and bases like vinegar curing alkaline wasp stings is quite a popular one. And then in the next page, I have given the meaning of pH. A few examples of items across the pH scale and I have written the summary of all the colors of indicators. It's actually very easy to remember. All you need to know is for universal indicator, it goes from red to purple. For methyl orange, it goes from red to yellow. For litmus paper, it goes from red to blue. And for phenolphthalein, it only gives the color pink in a basic solution. Okay, salt, this is arguably one of the hardest chapters ever because there's so much to remember. I have three pages of notes where I simplified the whole topic. I'm confident that if you go through these three pages, it'll help you a lot for memorizing this chapter. I just want to touch on the solubility of salt. This is very, very, very important. Basically, whatever salt that contains sodium, potassium, ammonium, and nitrate are always soluble in water no matter what. And chlorine is always soluble except for Pusatu and Agame Hindu, and all sulfates are soluble except for Pusatu and Bahasa China. Kalau korang confuse dua Pusatuan ni, ingat yang satu Pusatuan hanya boleh ada satu C. So, Pusatuan Bahasa China dah ada C dalam China. So, dia tak boleh jadi untuk chloride. Dan dia akan ambil sulfate. Then Persatuan Agama Hindu belum ada C, so dia akan ambil chloride. And then ada carbonate, oxide, dan hydrogen. All are insoluble except for sodium, potassium, and ammonium. Because sodium, potassium, and ammonium are like always, always, always soluble. Okay, the next two pages, I have simplified all the notes as neatly as possible for tests for gases, action of heat, test for anion, test for cation, and confirmatory test for cation. Try to take a picture of these diagrams in your head and remember the arrangement of everything. During the exam, when a question for salt comes up, I will just close my eyes and think of all these diagrams and I'll try to remember using photographic 
memory. So tonight, before sleeping, for those of you who are aiming for high marks, memorize this because it's really, really, really important. And that's about it for Form 4 syllabus. I'm not gonna go through chapter 9 because I feel like that chapter is specifically for those who want to aim for A+, and there's nothing much to explain because it's fully memorization. And that's all for me in this video guys. In this video I only explained my tactics for form 4. So my next video will be part 2 which is for form 5 which I will upload in a few minutes. Please leave a like if this video was in any way beneficial to you. Subscribe if you want more tips. And that's all for me. Part 2 coming next. Good luck and as always aim for the best. Never settle for less and let God handle the rest. Peace.